Welcome back to another episode of Community Unapologetic Podcast. Today we'll be talking about talking finances with Richard Carlisle, new and entrepreneur. Mr. Richard, yep, welcome to the be show. Pretty to be here, man. Thank, Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for the invite. Yeah. Uh, well, we're going to start off today's show. You know, uh, how, how minorities are always in a bad credit situation and uh, have bad credit more, more so than the rest of the population in America. So we're just going to start off and ask Richard a few questions about like how, how to fix bad credit, like a bad credit situation. Okay. Yeah, good question, man. Um, just to pick up, pick it back, back off what you said. Um, that is true, man. Usually, most minorities, uh, African Americans, I hate to call myself minorities, really, really yeah. not. But uh, we're not really educated about finances, man. And um, you know, I hate to say it, but most African Americans do have bad credit. Yeah. Uh, and it's not, it's because you know we're lazy and things to lack of knowledge. So like yeah. you know, right, right. Our, our folks to know about credit, their folks to know about credit. So you know, what I'm saying that's how we get kind of lagged behind. But um. Really, with bad credit, man, it, it's a process. Usually, um, when you're having bad credit, the first thing you want to do is get your credit report. So once you review your credit report, you want to look for inaccurate items on there. Mm-hmm. So inaccurate items could be considered like the, uh, the date you're opening, the credit limit on the account, the account name, the account number. You want to look for tedious stuff like that. And what you can do is kind of dispute those. And usually how the process works on that, um, once you dispute it, the credit bureau has 30 days to respond to their dispute. And if they don't, they have to remove it by law. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, and, and the reason you check on that, man, when you when you do your dispute letters, you have to do a certified mail. And you want a certified mail with a confirmation signature. That way, you know, that's your evidence that, hey, if they receive the credit report, they have responded. And usually once you get the certified mail back, it's a date on them. And by that date, they have to respond by. Okay. So if they don't, then, yo. Yeah, because uh, bad credit, I mean, it plays, like you said, the uh, African-American uh, community. Right. We don't get talk about in school, so, you know, yeah. we don't know real, if your parents don't know about it, you kind of screwed it. Yeah. yeah, you know, and then just like me, the way I grew up, my mama had things in my name, yep. you know, <laughs> and stuff like that. So I already kind of had bad credit established, but she yeah. never taught me or kind of, you know, spoke with me about what it takes. Like right. you just explained to, to get that good credit, to get to that area. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, absolutely. And, uh, can you talk about some of the benefits of having good credit? Oh yeah, absolutely, man, dude. Um, bro, having good credit. I mean, it comes. We just talk about houses, like to get that yeah. five hundred thousand dollar house, and a little as we'll say to get qualified for a house nowadays, you you can have a five eighty credit score with the FHA loan. But the thing with that, uh, they probably changed the restriction because of COVID. They moved it up to a six twenty. But to go back to your question, let's say you got a customer who has a six twenty credit score versus somebody who has an 800 credit score. You're looking at an interest rate for a person with an 800 credit score probably come out about a 2.5% on a $500,000 house. Rather than this person with a 620 credit score, they might get hit with like a 4.85% on $500,000. You talking about this. That's a lot of money. The percentages yeah. sound small, but dude, long term, mm-hmm. you talking about over like 100,000 in interest and whatnot that you paying between the two just because of the credit scores. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it makes a world of difference. But you know what's crazy what I heard about with good credit, you can have good credit, mm-hmm. but I'm actually like with credit lines, I, I think is credit line does an impact on good credit? You got like good credit line? Yeah, uh, for sure. Um, usually if you have better credit, you get a higher credit line. Yeah. So like with the credit line as a lender, most times what they're going to look at is like your limit. So let's just say um, you're going to apply for a loan, you want a loan for $1,000. Yeah. And your credit card limit is only 500 on your credit report. So really it's like kind of a risk a risk factor that they take. You're going to look at it where you only have a $500 credit limit. So why would I lend you a thousand? Right. You never managed, you know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. You never managed the 500 before. So so, I, so how do you up that? Um, usually, if you want to up it, a lot of times what lenders do, well, I'll give y'all a secret on this, like with your credit cards. Okay, let's say you got that 500 limit credit score. Uh-huh. What you want to do is keep the credit limit below 10%. See, a lot of people get their credit card and just max it out. Right, you right, pay yeah. the minimum payment every single month. That's actually killing your credit. And when you look at it as a lender, it's like, I gave you five hundred dollars. You already maxed the card out. Why would we give you more money? That's right. That's kind of like a risk. Yeah, right. Yeah, you're yeah, on, yeah, on the card. card on it. Yeah. You're right on the card to pretty much just get by. So if you keep your limit below ten percent, that shows the lender that he's responsible with his five hundred. And then after six months, usually what they do is increase your credit limit. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then yeah, about the credit card. How like do they pull like for that? What's for us with the credit cards? Yeah. Um, like, uh, 
I, well, I put it to you like this. So when you get your monthly statement, mm -hmm. you want to have have it down to the ten percent. Like right. what if what if you max it out? Like just say you got a Home Depot credit card, okay. and you go and buy a lawnmower. With right. It. But like you want to get it like back up within the ten percent range. Before, yeah. Before, before that the, next uh, statement, you out. get a thirty okay. day statement. Yeah. So okay. if you get it if you get it below within the next statement date, then the bill's gonna reflect that ten percent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yep. So you said uh, you want to check your credit scores. So what's the best website? Uh, best website you want to use? Well, by law, you, everybody gets a free credit report. Annualcreditreport.com. By law, you're supposed to get a free credit report. Everybody usually gets one like the first of the year just to see where they at mm -hmm. with their credit report. Um, Annual Credit Report is one, and um, Privacy Guard. PrivacyGuard.com is one. Yeah, that's one I use. Yeah. I'm actually because everybody. You know, people, some people, most people use credit cards. Yeah. <laughs> I, I heard that that don't tell you really it's, not, man, it's not. Uh, the thing about credit card, man, it, it really, to be honest with you, it's, it's like a monitoring service. So, like, when you get alerts on your credit report, anything like that, uh, credit card is going to alert you about that. But that's not your actual credit score, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I've seen many times, like, like I got credit cards. Yeah, I do, too. Uh -huh. and, and I check it, and I check it. But then, like, you get pulled, it might be higher or lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Time. Right. Back, back in high and trans uh -huh. I'm like, I'm okay. like, wait, but this ain't the same thing. And I'm like, oh, okay, but well, it's high. You know? Right. So, yeah. And, uh, one thing I learned just from you and uh, dealing with you mm -hmm. with, on the credit and the financial tip, the revolving credit. Yeah. And that, that's kind of what you talked about with the credit card. Absolutely. Yeah. Keep it down underneath 10%. Uh, I try to keep mine at once. Yeah, you can. The lower the better, man. Yeah, the lower the better. better. And like I tell people this too, man. A lot of people are like, what am I just paying off the zero balance? Well, the thing is, the how the, how the credit system works, even if it's at a zero balance, they're going to count it as like 30%. So really, if you keep it at one, it's going to report that 1%. You yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? So the lower mm -hmm. the better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about like past due bills? Uh, how, how, do, how do they affect your credit? Wow. Well, I, uh, first, what I'll do, I'll break down the credit score for y'all for a lot of people who don't know. Um, this is pretty much the breakdown of your credit. 35% of your credit score is going to be payment histories. So just like he spoke on, that's, man, if you miss, you can have an 800 credit score. You missing one payment on any account, drop your score like 100 points. Easy. <laughs> just like that. Because that it, it holds a higher percentage of your credit score. So paying your bills on time is probably the most fundamental, the most important standard of having good credit. 30% right. um, of your credit is the credit card utilization that we just spoke about. So you want to always keep your credit limits. Usually... Standard, they say 30%, but I always tell my customers 10% of the low is always where you want to be at yeah, credit right, cards. 15% right. um, of your credit is going to be um, credit length. So, like, a lot of us are kind of young, so we just not established credit, mm -hmm. so it's not going to really benefit us. Yeah. But a trick to that, like, let's just say your mom had a credit card back in the 90s or the 80s or something. Mm -hmm. She can add you as an authorized user. So, what that does, it's going to report her good credit on your credit. So it's going to look like, you know what I'm saying, that you okay. had credit yeah. like over 20 years and really, you know what I'm saying, you just yeah. piggybacking off her good credit. Right. That's okay. that's the way you can establish credit, that, even for your kids. Note, yeah. so right. That's a note to parents. Yep. Mm -hmm. Make sure your kids, you hook your kids up. Yeah, yeah. for sure. That, 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 that's what they're saying, just kick your kids up. So basically what you're saying right now, with my credit card, I can add my son yeah. to it. Yep. And then the uh, good credit that I have will go it's to him. Go to him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hey man, you hook the kids up, then you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And see, but that that's how that's how most black people fall behind right. the curve because they don't know, they don't know they this don't know. information. Yeah. You know, it's not it's not discussed in black homes. Right. Yeah. You know, like that. It's not a real big thing on credit. You know, we're just not starting to wake up and yeah. open up like Absolutely. credit. Credit goes a long way because I seen I think an athlete I can't remember his name, but uh, he he was talking about uh, found a bank rusher, but he was talking about how. You can have X amount of dollars, but it don't mean nothing. It don't mean nothing. <laughs> if your credit score you ain't getting no anything, you know, because you just have to pay cash right. for everything, for everything. Like, you know, and, and yeah. that won't help. But what about student loans? Like people that went to school. Like, how, 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 how bad does it affect your credit score by not paying student loans? Uh, yeah. ooh, that's just, man, if you miss a payment on that, it, it's still going to kill your credit score. So, like, a lot of, a lot of students, like, have their uh their student loans in deferment. Um, yeah. So a lot of times when you put it in deferment, I mean, it can hurt you long term, especially like you're trying to apply for a mortgage or something. Yeah. Because what they're going to do, whatever the balance is that you owe on that, on that, um, on that student loan, it's going to count as 1%. So let's just say you owe, what? Uh, five grand. Yeah, five grand. Five grand. One percent. They're going to calculate that to your debt to income ratio. So a way around that is, man, it's like these, uh, these payment plans, like the, was it, um, 
the pay as you go, something like that, yeah. those payment plans. Yeah, get in those, man, because when you apply for a mortgage, you can use that documentation oh, okay. to report. It's like, hey, I'm in a payment for plan. So like you're paying thirty dollars a month for your student loans, right. that's what they're gonna count. So uh, a lot of things that like flow around the internet, like on social media, mm-hmm. and say like uh, uh, student loan forgiveness, are, are those legit? So, uh, yeah, they are, man. Some, some, it just depends. Like, um, for instance, I, I deal with a client that she has student loans for going to be forgiven, like within twenty years, and they actually did, like, a twenty year period. Like, she had a student loan consultant that actually they had them forgiven. And I think it's after so much percentage or amount that you own student loans. That they'll forgive so much of it. So, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always thought it was a scam. No, <laughs> it ain't. Yeah. Because I, uh, one year, one year I had, and this is just a quick story, I had student loans and I was waiting to get my income tax. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They get took it. it. <laughs> and he took the whole thing. I was like, no. But, it, but in the long run, it helped pay off right. that one you know, student loan that yeah. I had. So it left me with on one. I owe like five grand on one that I've been paying like $60 a month right. on. So, because I'm, I'm in a, I'm in the process of trying to purchase a home. Yeah. So, like yeah. you said, I just want all that in good standing. So, yeah, when I'm going to my lender, it'll, it'll look good and right. stuff like that. So, you know, but that's, that's, that was one of the main things I was trying to find out. Like, how does credit uh, affect uh, blacks in America? Yeah. A black person that's in America. Man. Dude, I mean, I mean, let's just keep it 100, man. Uh, we, we come into the world with two strikes already against us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Black and you a man. Black man. You see mm-hmm. what I'm right. saying? So, you know, not having credit, man, that just puts you really even further behind the race. So, you know, like we just talked about this, like talking about this daily in your in your home is actually going to put you above the curve. Because, they, man, they don't teach us this in college. No. They don't teach you at all. Yeah. yeah. They don't your teach you how to do this. But they'll teach, you how to, they'll teach you how to uh, dissect the frog. So, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So they come on. You might not even do that. Uh-huh. But, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that, that's, that's important, mm-hmm. man. And like I said, we trying to... Uh, Get the people educated. Right. Trying to educate. We're trying, we're trying to teach school. y'all listen on credit because a lot of people don't know about credit. That's right. You know, so. And because um, another thing, too, having credit as far as trying to start up a business, mm-hmm. like a small business, how does your credit go? Oh, that's business? big, bro. Like, especially like when you're starting out with a business, the hardest thing going to be really to do is get credit because your business is not really established. So they're going to look at, like, what do we have to go against? So you have to sign this kind of like a person guarantee is what they call it. Mm-hmm. So they're going to look at your credit, kind of what you base your credit based off the of business. And once the business is kind of established, then mm-hmm. that's when you can go out and start getting like business credit on your uh, on your own EIN number for your business and stuff like that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I read, I read a little thing, an article where it was uh, saying uh, open up a business account or something. I can't recall word for word what it was, mm-hmm. but uh, it was saying open up a business account. This for your child, right? And uh, kind of like you said, and file that on your taxes, right? Uh, for like four years or whatever, you had an authorized business credit card. Well, uh, pay them a salary, yeah. And then that's a tax write off. Yeah, 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 that's a tax write off. Yeah. And then open up, and then by the time they graduate, right, hand them a business. Yeah, card. like look here. Hey, you know, already said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah that's that's definitely that's stuff we need to be teaching each other, man. To be honest with you. Yeah, yeah. Because we don't we don't have uh, those those kind of talks. No, right. And don't have we don't have that in school. Like, I I feel like ta- like credit and taxes should be in school. Yeah, they should. Yeah. I agree with you hundred percent. Yeah, but but by you being a small business owner, the uh, this pandemic, mm-hmm. how, how is it? Like, man, it, uh, I can say good and bad, but really, bro, uh, the pandemic, man, it it really it's gonna teach you either. Are you really made for this or not? Because you got to get creative. I mean, we in times now, we, we, we can't control it. So yeah. really, man, I, I kind of like it in a sense because now I can use my creative juices to, you know, create new things and see if this work or that yeah. work just to kind of test it out. But for sure in the pandemic, man, it's going to, it definitely tests us for yeah. sure. Yeah, I, yeah I, I saw where y'all had to uh, drive up with it. Yeah, yeah it drive through, right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And daggers and stuff. I'm like, okay, man. Yeah, I was, I was meaning to come through and give me a plate, but I think I was busy doing something else that day. You know, and then another thing people don't uh, understand about the dispute thing, just to kind of go back to the top, okay. the uh, fair, fair credit reporting act. Yeah, and that, that's what allows you to dispute Absolutely, a lot of man. things, a lot of uh, negative things on right. the credit. That's a consumer. I mean, that's the that's really the disputing process, man. You got to use that to your advantage, the fair credit reporting act, FCRA. Um. So basically, it pretty much states that you as a consumer have the right to dispute anything on your credit that you feel is inaccurate, uh, untimely, or anything that's kind of misrep- misrepresentation of yourself. So, okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
and some things to take into consideration for those, those who didn't know or who's working on their creative and right. stuff. Yeah. And uh, but you you own a credit repair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the name of it? Family First Credit Repair Consultants. All right. And how can they reach you if they're looking for you? Uh, my number is six zero one five nine five zero five six one. Um, my website is www.familyfirstcreditrepairconsultants.com. Yeah. And one more question: How is how is credit calculated? Uh, how credit is calculated? So uh, basically, the breakdown of what we just talked about: you got thirty five percent, which is your payment history. 30% is the credit utilization. 15% is your credit length. Uh, we didn't talk about the 10% is going to be the mix of credit. So they want to see what we just talked about, revolving credit and installment credit. So the difference between the two, revolving credit is like a credit card. It's like mm -hmm. interest that revolves over a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And installment loans like a car loan or mortgage where it has an oh, end okay. date. Okay. Yeah, it has an actual end date where, you know, if you got 24 payments, it's going to pay off the 24. And then you got the last 10%, which is uh, credit inquiries. Now, credit inquiries, you got hard and soft inquiries. Right. So, yeah, the hard inquiries is like you're applying for a loan that's going to decrease your credit score. Um, usually, all you want to have is two inquiries per year. So, one every six months. That's why a lot of people don't even know that. Oh, so, okay. yeah, anything over that is, is kind of like, man, you're robbing people to pay off pretty much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of overkill. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. yeah. That's why you try to buy a car, tell, tell them don't check the credit. <laughs> yeah, my thirty of your cards on. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but that's uh, man, it was something else. I had something else juicy. I had action. <laughs> God, Lee, I had forgot. Car people, I will. I find out my cars. You know about your cars too, because neg negative equity. Oh, ooh, yeah, that'll eat you up too, man. And uh, negative equity basically, let's just say you bought a car for five thousand, right. and the car was only worth one thousand. So you know what I'm saying? You put yeah. dollars in the hole going into oh, okay. it. So yeah, so you purchase a new car that's ten thousand, they're gonna add that four that you owe on top of the ten. So now you buying a car that's probably worth seven thousand, but you're paying fourteen thousand. Yeah. 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 And, and uh, they said black folks do that all the time. They do. Mm -hmm. They do. They don't know better, man. Yeah, they yeah the best way to think, man, really, the best way to purchase a car, bro, is go to the bank and get pre-approved first. That way, if you get pre-approved for ten thousand, you got the purchasing power already before you go to the car lot. So right. ain't no negotiation. I got the money already. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you gonna sell me the car? We gonna make a deal? We not? You see uh -huh. what I'm saying? So that's how you, you really you can press car salesmen like that. So they selling the car for ten, but you only got what seven? You can talk now. Oh yeah, yeah. they gonna take that uh -huh. money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> they won't take that. that. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. I hate because you got cash, money. but it's cash. Now. Right, <laughs> it wasn't guaranteed. Yeah. <laughs> Cause the car probably been sitting there for a while. You know what I mean? As soon as you drive it off, anyway, it's gonna depreciate. That's so, right. Yeah, I knew what I had to ask you. So people who who have bad credit, mm -hmm. who are trying to get a credit card, I I know that you have a secured credit right. card that you can get or a secured loan, but that's your own money. Right. But but what about when when you don't? You might not have any money, but you're trying to get a credit card. Ah, uh, the you best way get one, huh? you probably won't. Um. Nine times out of ten, if you come in a situation where you have bad credit, um, like you said, a secured card would be your best option. Yeah. You go to the bank, save up like two hundred dollars, go to the bank, like, hey, I want to get a secured credit card and establish your credit. So basically, you're gonna put up two hundred dollars of your own money. They're gonna put it on the credit card for you and see how you manage it. Yeah. And that's how you can kind of, you know, take about six months, pay it on time, keep the credit utilization down, mm -hmm. so you can start establishing that long term. But also, like we talk about the uh, authorized user, that's another way. Yeah. And kind of boost your credit up. Okay. How, how long did it take to, to build your credit up? Uh, really, uh, six months, really, is, is kind of the, the time span of what most of them is looking at as far as with your time span to see how you paying your bills on time. It takes about six months to kind of build up a score. Yeah, yeah, because uh, back when I first mm -hmm. uh, met you and uh, you started kind of educating me on right. this, uh, yeah, my credit score was kind of in the fives. Yeah, it, it, it boosts way up. Right. Yeah, yeah I remember the last man. last time we talked about you purchasing the house. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, so I'm still that's still in the works right, right. now. But you know, I just I'm, I'm I hate to say it, but I'm blessed, man. You it's know, good. to meet people like you right. yeah, with the education bro. and the knowledge to share with other people. That's why we and, and yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, and you pass that off to other people, minorities or whoever, whoever come across you know so. I feel real blessed about that, man. You're, you're a good brother. Appreciate it. Yeah. Like I said, you're my favorite new. I'm going to hold you home. Yeah, man. But I, I appreciate, appreciate you stopping by. Oh, yeah, man. The time, man. Yeah. Time. Thank y'all. Yeah. Y'all don't have me. I ain't going to fit my credit. Y'all just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's been good. Good talking with you.
Uh, next week we'll be talking real estate with Nina Foster. She's going to tell about how you can purchase a house. All right. Till next time, we just say uh, subscribe, watch, subscribe, like, and uh, this comment, <laughs> comment, comment. If you have any questions, uh, Richard, uh, we'll put Richard's number kind of in the uh, link or whatever, so you can reach him if you want to get it established with him or help you build credit. Because we get we gave you the tools, but unfortunately, a lot of people are lazy and they don't want to do it. So that's what you got people like Richard <laughs> for. And uh, you pay him a little bit and he'll help you fix your credit, like I say. But you have to be patient because right. it takes time. It's yes. not going to happen overnight. But you will see some type of increase. And like I say, when you mail off those letters, it takes 30 days to get them back. Right. So be patient, you know, and bar with it if, that, if that's a set goal for you because credit goes a long way. It does. You know, it it does. goes a long way in this society. Anyway, this has been Talking Finances with Richard Carlisle. Until next time. Deuces.